الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا أيها الأكوى وأكوى وقد ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله على بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب In this beautiful verse Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says in Surah Al-Wa'ad the 13th chapter of the Quran reminding us that those who believe and what taught them in the Quran that their hearts become rejoiced their hearts get satisfaction from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal their hearts become satisfied by hearing the remembrance or by remembering Allah Jalla wa Ala and then Allah says Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'in qulub and is it not the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfying for the heart so one of the things that will bring content one of the things that will bring tranquility that will bring rest to each and every one of our hearts no doubt will be the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if it's the opposite effect meaning that the dhikr of Allah jalla wa ta'ala does not affect your heart then that's a clear sign that your heart is maigid, that your heart is dead, or marid, sick or diseased, okay? This is important to understand that the heart that is affected by the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is the heart that is sound, bi'ithmillah. This is a continuation of our morning thicker, or morning athwar, if you will, where we have been going over to the last couple of mornings by the Christian Allah Jalla dealing with the verses in Surah Ali Imran, starting from verse 14, uh, and now we did verse 15, and now we're on verse 16 and 17. We're on verse 16 and 17. And that is, after Allah Jalla tells us about the seven things which has been made beautified from men, He talks about those seven things, and those seven particular things that Allah Jalla mentions is none other than the fact that they are not the sum total of the dunya, but <clears throat> they are those things which Allah Jalla wa Ala mentions. All right. So then Allah Jalla wa Ala mentions in the second verse, telling us that there are things better than those seven things, and He talks about the jannat, He talks about the guardians, and He talks about the azwaj mutahhira, and He talks about the purified means. And then Allah Jalla wa Ala gives us the last for the best. Or the one with Allah. And the pleasure of Allah is greater than all of that. The pleasure of Allah Jalla wa Ala is greater than the gardens themselves. The pleasure of, um, of Allah Jalla wa Ala is greater than the pleasure of Allah is greater than the purified means, etc. All right? Ascertaining Allah Jalla wa Ala. Then Allah tells his informers that he sees all of his servants, whether they Muslim or not Muslim. All right? <clears throat> Then Allah mentioned the qualities right here. And this is important for us to pay attention. The sifat, the qualities of the individuals of this particular, um, those who have taqwa. All right? So, Shaykh Thimeen, rahmatullah ta'ala, alayhi, he brings the fawaid from these next two verses, which is verse 16 and 17. And it goes as follows. yakuluna Rabbana innana amanna faqfir lana dhunubana wa kina adhab anna. Those who say, Our Lord, indeed we have believed. So forgive us our sins and protect us from the fire. As sabirina, wa sadiqina, wa al qanitina, wa al munfikina, wa al mushtakfirina bil ashab. So Allah Jalla mentions five qualities here. He said that they are truthful, men and women. I saw the, I mean, he said sabihina, they are patient men and women. Or sabihina, then they are truthful men and women. All right? So they have quality of truthfulness, siddiq, and they have quality of patience. 
they exercise patient and the losses were quarantine if they are devout and obedient men and women. This is another characteristic that they possess. And then Allah says, وَالْمُنْفِقِينَ And they spin out of those things which Allah has provided for them. So they also give, all right? They are those who give. They are not spenders or they are not miser. It's bukhar, all right? They give. So these are four problems. Then Allah says, وَالْمُسْتَقْفِرِينَ بِنْ أَسْحَابِ How do they spend their night? You're going to find that in some part of the night, they're going to be up seeking Allah Jalla forgiveness. They're going to be fine in the middle of the night. It doesn't matter if you offer one rock on it. All right? As one of the companions will do, he performed the Salat al Tahajjud, or Salat al you want to call it. For one year straight, he only performed one rock on it. One rock on it for one year. And when they asked him why, he says, because I was training my nafs. I was training my soul to get use of standing at night. And this shows you the fit of the understanding that they have. And also shows you the ikhlas. So it wasn't about the quantity, it was more so about the quality. So just because he didn't do 11, 13, et cetera, et cetera, it still doesn't make what he done less. You understand? So it doesn't take away from that one. And that's the beauty about the deen of Islam because Allah is going to grade you on your sincerity. So how sincere you are in implementing the deed and the way that the deed is performed is going to be the basis for which the deed will be accepted. All right? And you won't even know that. Okay? That information is not a tool. It's for Allah Azza wa Jalla. Tight. Let's go. Now, we mentioned the two verses. Now let's see the benefits. The first benefit Shaykh Uthaymi mentioned is that the qualities of the muttaqin, those people who Allah Jalala has blessed to be who have taqwa, and we ask Allah to make us among them and me, is their announcement of having iman in Allah. Okay? Their announcement of having iman in Allah. Also, they're recognizing their servitude. They recognize that they are enslaved to Allah. They recognize that they are servants. You understand? They recognize that their purpose here on earth is to serve Allah Azza wa Jalla. As Allah Jalla says in his book, Allah says, and we have not created, I have not, Allah says, I have not created mankind and jinns except that they should worship me. Right? Tight. <coughs> and this is all taken from the part where Allah says, those who believe. And their statement here is something that is said with both the tongue and the heart. Their statement here is said with both the tongue and the heart. On the tongue, they say what? We believe. Amanna. In their heart, they believe it that they believe. All right? The second benefit is that from the qualities or the descriptions and attributes of the pious, those who have taqwa, is the avoidance or the absence of being amazed with oneself. This contradicts the sincerity. This contradicts them being servants to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And as we told you before, this deen is all about ikhlas. It's all about sincerity. So if you are amazed with your deeds, if you are amazed with your actions, then you are contradicting the fact that you're being sincere. All right? Because you made it about yourself, and it's not about you, it's about worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. Look what he just said. He said that one of the things you're going to find out about the people of pious is that they consider themselves to be deficient when seeking out the forgiveness from the law. They consider themselves to be deficient in even doing that. So they don't think that, okay, just because I sought Allah's forgiveness, Allah forgave me. Or they don't think that I have done it in the correct manner. They are still afraid whether or not that, that will be accepted. Allah will now, the third benefit, and he says this is due to the part where they says, فَقْفِرُ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا فَقْفِرُ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا Forgive us for our sins. The third benefit is that taqwa, okay? تَقْوَ لَا تَعْصِمُ عَبْدٍ مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ وَالْقَضِي يَقُونَ لَهُ الذُّنُوبِ لَكِنْ مُتَّقِّ يُبَادِ بِالتَّوْبَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَ This is an important point. Because when we hear the word pious, and sometimes Muslims do it to other Muslims, which I, don't, I can't understand why you do that, people will try to be sarcastic 
or be judgmental towards one another. Oh, you think you're pious people, or you think you're this pious individual. And that's just something that believers should do to one another. Because any practice of any type of piety, that's from Allah, and there's only for Allah to accept. So you shouldn't make your brother or your sister feel some type of way because they are trying to practice some form of taqwa. Here, though, it's important to understand, taqwa in and of itself does not protect you from sins. I'm going to repeat this again. The Sheikh said that taqwa in and of itself does not protect the servant from falling into sins. Because you have taqwa doesn't mean that you won't sin. This is the point he's making. He says, rather, once you want to find out the person who has taqwa, this is what's going to happen when they do sin. You're going to find that the mutaqi, the one who has taqwa, he's going to hasten, she's going to hasten to seek total before. They're going to make mistakes. They understand. But then they're going to rush to clean that mistake up. All right? They're going to make mistakes, and they know that. They're not put on this earth to be um, perfect human beings. Fourth benefit is the permissibility of seeking the nearness to Allah by way of your belief. You can seek a means of closeness to Allah by way of your belief. Say, for example, like in the beautiful hadith of the three men that was in the cave, and notice how they use each action they might have did or have done as a means to remove the rock that was blocking them from getting out the cave. You can use a means of getting closer to Allah Jalla Wa'ala. So he says here, because they say, Rabbana innana amanna faqfir lana dhubana. Look what they're using now. They're using their iman to ask Allah to forgive them for their sins. They said, Our Lord, indeed we have belief. By way of our iman, we're asking you to forgive us of our sins. So they're using their iman as a means to seek nearness to Allah. Right? The Shaykh says here, the fifth benefit is that it's be suitable for a person that he asks Allah to forgive him and to protect him from the fire. It's not sufficient that you just ask Allah to forgive you. You should say, Wakini, and protect him, and not, and protect him from the fire. The believer should always have his or her tongue moist with three main things. A lot of people don't understand that. The three main things that the believer should constantly keep on their tongue is a stuff for Allah to you. Seeking Allah forgiveness, number one. Asking Allah for Jannah to fill those. Asking Allah for the highest part of Jannah. And seeking refuge from Allah from the fire. These three things should be clear. Notice how Allah Jalla wa Ali, He says about the believers. In the Quran, if you the Baqarah, Allah says what? Those who say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al Our Lord, grant us the good in this life and in the next life, and protect us from the fire. So notice how the fire is still there. And if you want to get technical here, and understand, grant us the good in this life, it's not just all the good things that one can accomplish for us materialistic or things in the dunya, but grant us your forgiveness. Having the law of forgiveness in this life is a shield. I should have been mentioned that seeking the law of forgiveness is seeking a protection, it's a stream, it shields you. So having that protection, and in the Akira, you know definitely to award you and to admit you into paradise, Jannah of and to protect you from the fire. The Shaykh says here, Wa su'ala makfira yukni an su'ala wa qayyib in anna, illa annahu fi bab du'a, yamba ki basta li arba tu asbab. So the Shaykh says, when asking for forgiveness, then is it sufficient that the one who acts just for protection from the fire? Or that this is from the affair of du'a that is befitting, he says, al-basr al-arbat al-asbab. Four things, four means, four causes. The first reason is an yastahta wa insanu jamia ma yadu'u bihi anwa. That the person brings to mind when offering du'a all of that which he's uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and his different types. All right? A subtle was then, the second reason, or the second cause for his or her, for him or her to make dua. That's what we're talking about. The causes that will cause you to make dua, right? And he says here, the second reason is that dua muhatibatul lillahi azza Dua is like a conversation. You're conversing with Allah, all right? 
It's like you're conversing with Allah, muhatiba, right? You're conversing with Allah, Jalla wa Ala. Wa kullama tabasu insanu ma Allah fi muhatiba, kana dalika ashoku wa habda ilayhi min Allah Taala sabila iktisal. And he says each time that a person converses with Allah, each time that a person offers dua to Allah Jalla wa Ala, then that person is talking to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he says that will make that person more what? That person will be what? Will make make come to Allah and make him more dearer to him, or make that make Allah more dearer to him than the Allah uh, Da'a, more than that which he would just make dua upon, like you know, a brief dua, right? <clears throat> the third cause, or the third reason, he says that every time the person increases in dua, then he also increases in his or her nearness to Allah. All right. How many of us just make dua? You notice it's prescribed for the believer to make dua coming out their house, put on their clothes, it's just anywhere. Roll, even when you turn it over at night, you offer dua. Even when you want to enter your wife, you offer dua. Even when you want to, it's just dua at the end. And one of the people don't understand that dua, as it is mentioned, and they have support and narrations that dua is says the woman. The invocation is the weapon of the believer, right? And then we know that dua also is what? Dua is also a alaqa is a connection directly from the servant to Allah, the servant to his Lord, right? He says the third benefit, I mean, uh, yeah, he says the third cause, we did that. The fourth cause and the last cause, person making dua, he said each time a person increases in dua, can if he is harun if the kara and send la rupi. It also makes apparent the destitute, the need that the servant needs his Lord. All right, or in his or her need of their Lord. Well, he had the ja'a. For this reason, it comes, Allahumma qfirli dan bikulli. Oh Allah, forgive me of all of my sins. Dikkahu wa jallahu, one of my favorite du'as. Ala aniyatuhu wa sirruhu wa awalihu wa akhiru. And this beautiful du'a, which is collected by Bukhari, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ says, Oh Allah, forgive me of all of my sins. The real minute ones and the large ones. The ones that are done in the public, and the ones that's done in private. The ones in the beginning and the ones in the end. Forgive me of all my sins. He said, and this is suffice him, this dua, then his statement of saying, oh Allah, just forgive me of my sins. He says, rather if he says, oh Allah, forgive me. And that's the point he's trying to make. You, even though you can say, oh Allah, forgive me. Right? That's a correct way of asking Allah to forgive you. But it's not basir. All right? It's not, it's not detailed. You, you, you're not going in. So this is, this is the point he's trying to make. The more you go in, the more closer you get to Allah. The more you, you understand? So the Prophet didn't just say, oh Allah, forgive me of my sins. He said, oh Allah, forgive me of my sins, all of them. And then he says, dikkahu, the, the most minute of them, or jindahu, and the most large of them. Then he continues, right? <laughs> those that's done in public, right? What's simple and those that are done with in private. And then he continues. <laughs> and he was more basit. Baham being that basit, that closer is to Allah Jalla is better with the shaykhs here. The sixth benefit extracted from both of these verses is the affirming that there will be a punishment a punishment in the fire. No matter how Hollywood may make it seem as if to downgrade the effects of heaven and hell, or the realities of heaven and hell, all right? We are believing all the extra, you know, side effects of certain things, different movies and shows, but it's not really, we don't bring to the forefront that Allah Jalla has really made a hell, and he has really made a heaven, all right? So those things is real, and interestingly enough, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would get up for the night prayer, in his dua, in the beginning of the night prayer, he would say, what, what jinnah to haq? With Naru Haq. He would say that the paradise is true and the hellfire is true. This is what he was saying in his dua. Type. So when Allah says, Wakina Adab and Nar and protect us from the fire, Adab and Nar in Mada in Mustamir, Wahadali Ashab and Nar Ladina Huma Ashabina, in Ma Muakkad, Wahadali Ashab and Mars, Fenumi Adi Buna be Hassan Mahasim, either Lambda for the Lahu Lahu. So with the people of Ahlasunati with Jamaat, they explain that the time period for the punishment in the fire is of two types. All right, so the people of the Sunnah and Jamaat, they believe this. It's of two types. They're not like the Khawarij. The Khawarij believes that you're going to remain in the fire forever if you commit certain things, right? 
That's not the belief of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. So Shaykh Al-Tameen is bringing this point here. He says that the punishment of fire can either be done perpetually and consistently, meaning that a person will be in there for eternity. And he says also, uh, he says this will be for the companions of the fire, those who are from his companions. And it also could be done mu'akat. Mu'akat meaning that it's done for a period of time. Not for an eternity, but it's a period of time. Allah might, Allah might put certain people into the hellfire for a certain period of time. Allow it to clean and purify them and take them out of that. We believe that from Muhammad Sunnah Tuba Jama'ah. All right? <clears throat> he says, and this is for the people of disobedience. They will be punished according to their disobedience. Either lam yakfirullahu lahum if Allah Jalla wa does not forgive them. The eighth, seventh benefit. Take it from these verses. And we only got nine, so we get ready to stop, inshallah. He says, فَدِّلَةُ هَذِيَ الصِّفَاتِ أَلَّتِ أَثْنَ اللَّهُ عَلِيهَا he says the virtues of these qualities is shown that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had praised them himself. He praised these qualities. Let me see if y'all got laws. What are the qualities again? Sabr, patient, civic, truthfulness, qanit, qanitin, devout and obedient, wamun fikin, give it what? Spinning out of that which Allah provided for you, wal mustaq fideen, and seeking Allah forgiveness during the wee hours of the night. Right? The Shaykh he says, oh, he brings them right here. <laughs> he just brought all of them. Alhamdulillah. He says, uh, and the encouragement to adorn these qualities for oneself. He says, the eighth benefit is that sabr afdullah had sifat. He says, the greatest of these qualities is patience. He says, the best and the most virtuous of all of these qualities I mentioned is none other than patience. He says, the anna insan idha haqqa qasabr. He says, because if a person is able to actualize patience, then he is actually able to actualize all the rest of the qualities. Right? He says, the end of an example of He says, because from the types of patience is a sabr ala ta'ata la wa ma'asiyati. The patience upon the obedience of Allah and the patience upon refraining from disobeying Him. As they break down sabr into three types. And then he says, nine, the last benefit that he brings from these two verses, which is the end, inshallah, is them with this offer be dipti hadir sifat. He says, the dispraiseworthiness of the opposite of these qualities. All right? He says, and that is al jazm, wa kalim, wa kila tapar, wa bukhl, wa shah, wa stikbar, and istikfar. So notice what he says here. So it's complaining. <laughs> it's complaining. All right? It's uh, denying or lying, because lying is the opposite of truthfulness. It's what kills the power. It's having less obedience, not being obedient, because that's the opposite of what? Qanitin, of being a devout and obedient person. Wa bukhar wa shuh, and being miserless and stingy. That is the opposite of what one fakim, give it, provide, one faq. Wa istikbar and istikfar, and being too haughty and arrogant to seek Allah's forgiveness. All right? And, and sometimes we, we get like that. One of the tricks of the shaitan is that they that he makes a person believe that you can, whatever deeds you've done is so foul that you can't approach the creator to seek forgiveness for. That's not how Islam works. And no matter what deed a person does on the face of this earth, they can turn to Allah for forgiveness. And no matter what type of sin, whether it's from the major sins or the less major sins, the door of istighfar is open for everyone. And it's a time period when that door would not be open. Who knows who that time period is? There are two of them. And it's one when the soul reaches the throat, and then when it's the sun rises from the west. All right? So, in that case, that means anyone, people who you know that were staunch disbelievers, who hated believers, so forth and so on, the door is still open for them. Now we have an incident where Allah Jalla did not allow the door to be open for one individual. Who can tell me who that one individual is? Pharaoh, Ahsat. Pharaoh is the one and only one who Allah Jalla did not leave that door open for. And he actually caused Jibril to take the dirt and stuff in his mouth. He couldn't even get it out. He was trying to say, I believe in the same Lord as Musa and Harun. He was stuffing it in his mouth before he could say it. He can say it. Actually, Allah did one of the worst things for Pharaoh. He punished him 
He punished him tremendously in three or four different ways. Not only did he not allow him to say the statement, he drowned him and then he preserved his body. Then, meaning that the earth wouldn't take him. So, you understand? That he preserved his body. Not only that, then he would be tormented with humming his people, uh, you know, in the morning and in the evening. You have to pay attention. And then he's going to buy in the fire forever. So, you have to understand that this is, I mean, this was a grave individual. I know how the Jews talk about Hitler being one of the worst criminals on the face of mankind. He, Hitler ain't got nothing on Federal all right? Federal own is the worst individual. This type, this type of Pharaoh we're talking about. The Pharaoh of Musa, all right? <clears throat> uh, that's it, alhamdulillah. We always said that was incorrect, that our talk and our translation was definitely from ourselves. We said, what was such correct from Allah Jalla wa'ala? We ask, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to finish these beautiful verses. We ask Allah to allow us to adopt and to try to put these qualities into play. Not all at one time. Let's focus on having a little bit more patience, working on patience so we can begin to do that. If we was less truthful the day before, let's try to work on becoming more truthful than make that day following day, inshallah. Uh, so, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.